I am going to be stopping at a lot of places across the country, and this might be my first stop. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go! Atlanta, Georgia, a booming city, a big city, and a city that has estate sales. And I'm going to try to stop at a few on my way through. I am beginning my journey west from Florida to the west coast for the Spokane Antique Show. It's spring in Atlanta, and Atlanta is a pretty tree-lined city, so there's actually a lot of very pleasant little neighborhoods. The one we're going to first is not too far from Little Five Points, which is kind of the hipster part of town, on the way to Stone Mountain, and just over from the Jimmy Carter Presidential Library. So good morning everybody, I'm George the Antique Nomad. I conduct estate sales, but I don't really shop out of the ones that I conduct because it's a conflict of interest. And so I have to look at other people's estate sales to find my inventory when I'm a reseller. I am going to an estate sale right now, it's being held by Peach Tree and Associates, and I've been to one other of their sales at a mansion in Atlanta. You can look up in my old videos, Mansion Estate Sale in the thumbnail, and you'll see it. It's an auspicious thing that we're seeing a really cool early 1960s Ford Fairlane with that hot red interior. That's pretty neat, so maybe that's just telling us we're in the right place. And we are in the right place because here's an estate sale. So there's the sign. And there's the house. Very cute little house. So this company gets really interesting sales, and this one is no exception. They have some things that seem to be uh, Asian origin. They've got original art that looks like it's Venice. So this should be a lot of fun. It's the first day, and they did sell quite a bit, they said, but there is still going to be plenty left. Now they tend to deal with better estate sales in good neighborhoods, so the prices are not always cheap at their sales until it gets down to discount day. But I still found interesting stuff in the mansion estate that I went to previously with them, so I believe we will find something here. Look at that hairy chair. This is for the 50th anniversary of the Air Force. And... There we see the first Delta Wing supersonic fighter. It's a set of 12 with those. I think they're interesting, and I am going to probably on the way back from the West Coast be seeing Yvonne Thrifty Rich. She might have an interest in these. Let's see what else is in this stack. Yeah. Non-stop around the world flight. Pilotless bomber, you know. Always innovation. So these are five dollars each. I'm gonna pick a few of them, I think. Depending on the subjects. Because the other option I have is to sell them in Spokane where there's an Air Force base. They've got one of these really interesting French clocks. Sometimes you see those in a case, sometimes they just hung on the wall. They did have interestingly shaped cases that could go around these. You see the French writing on these. It's priced at $3.95, and you know, in the right hands, it could be worth about $800 to 1000 So it's not an unfair price at all. It's actually a price that someone who had that market could buy in. I've sold them before. I don't know whether I specifically need that one or not. 35 on the Meerschaum type. Babyology. Fletcher's Castoria. Yum. Castoria, $1. I wish they hadn't put the sticker on that, but I think for a dollar I'm going to take a chance to get that off because that's kind of cute. And then there's the danger age for children. Don't break that vase or you will be in trouble. This looks like it's Eastern Orthodox, this icon here. It's priced at 75 Tells us a little bit of this. It's a reproduction of a medieval one. And it's St. George just before he goes to slay the dragon. Nice Sorrento music box that still plays music. It even has the original tag. Getting any jewelry now? 
Interesting little brass freeze here, priced at 50. Houses where there have been people in the military are always interesting because they have things from all over the world, typically, if they were stationed abroad. Looks like the Lindens haven't been touched much. I think people on an estate like this often come for the really big, expensive, interesting things first, and then as the sale goes on, people start looking at the more basic household things like linens and books and things like that. This is a Troiguch. And it's priced at $195. It's an original oil. That seems like a reasonable price for what it is. Telescope. Let's see. It's $95. Where is the telescope itself, though? Is it in the box? Yes, it is. That may not be a bad deal. Telescopes can be rather expensive. This one seems like it's a 1960s or 70s made offshore. It's a shame the condition isn't better because I really like this little Art Deco cabinet, but it's losing a lot of its veneer. That can be replaced and restored, but it's a job and a half, that's for sure. Let's see what we have in here. This is kind of cute. She's a little too crackled, I guess, for my taste, which is too bad because at $25, the shape of the box is great. This would definitely be a good piece if it was in just a little better condition. Here's his Air Force caps. These are priced at 50 Well, let's see what might be out in the back, because the kitchen stuff all looks newer to me. I don't see anything that's my vintage. That big blue hanging piece, that's actually kind of fun. It's a big old chandelier behind all those beads. This one is priced at $5.95. I can't say I've seen one like it before. I like bar carts because they're instant shelving when I do antique shows. It's 125 It used to be I would have thought, oh, that's retail price, but nowadays they're very popular. That actually might sell for double. This is Royal Worcester's Evesham pattern. You don't see this big casserole very often at all. That one's $50 here. I do think there's probably room to make money in that price. I don't know whether it's enough to tempt me, though, because I already have a bunch of Evesham. School of Service Intelligence, United Kingdom. One cute little cup and saucer, Queen Anne from England. But those are priced at what I would sell them for. I like these colors in this glass, and it's 45 for the whole set. If it was just not so worn on the rim, I would probably buy this set for 45 believe it or not, because I'm finding that the colored stems are doing very well right now. Let's see here. Somebody else pulled out a really nice bust that I wished I'd seen, so I'm going to look at these little ones. These are Borghese, which is another Italian circa 1970s label that we see. And they are 75 for the set. A bunch of silver plate. The eggshell nautilus, this is a Homer Lachlan pattern. Eggshell nautilus is actually the blank. And then they did various decorations on them. It's cute. It's got the little square salad plates that I always like and a nice casserole bowl. Now these are spoon holders. Five dollars each. This particular flower, this is a newer piece, even though it feels old like cast iron. There's this century label from India, so it's about 1980, but it's $6, still not a bad price. We're going to check these and make sure that they're nothing, and they're nothing. Look at this very, very pretty inlaid Bombay style chest. Let's see what they tell us about this. It's going to open up like a secretary desk. And it has nice figuring inside and out. That's very pretty. Bombay is where this bulging flare comes out at the bottom, something we associate a lot with French design, even though they're saying this is Dutch style. I'm not sure what that is implying. This piece is kind of pretty. It looks hand-painted with the birds. 
and it has the Keramikos mark on the back. So this is Greek, and of course these painted Italian pieces are popular now too, $40 on that one. This one is, I believe, a Lennox piece for $15. Yes, there's the Lennox mark. Very pretty shape. If Lennox was a little better seller these days, $15 seems like a good price. Interesting little trio here, this chess set with the onyx and the stand is $6.95. I like this pure table because it's Italian and it's painted. Florentine console, yes, it's definitely Florentine. They want $2.95 now. For me, that's a retail price, so I couldn't touch that. Bicentennial Eagle bookends are nice and heavy, and they've got that Philadelphia manufacturing mark on the bottom that we see. I said Bicentennial, but actually they probably are a little earlier than that, maybe 50s. But again, they want 75 a pair, and I can't do that. Books here. The Prince of the House of David with illustrations. Three Years in the Holy City, 1892. That's a pretty book. And then this one is Pizzetti, and I imagine that this is going to be a collection. They say the King's Arrow collection. Ah... Uh, I see. So this is actually trying to sell this furniture, which is furniture I would associate with the United States, but this appears to have been made in Italy at the time. I did not realize that anything that looked like this from the 1970s would be made anywhere but the United States. So this is kind of interesting to see and they show you all of the different options. I have to say, I am not really a fan of this style of furniture from this period of time, but it is an interesting reference. Okay. This little piece should be Lalique with the two little birds. It's $40. And there's our signature. It's cute. It's not a bad price. It's not a super bargain either. This guy's 45. Alexander the Great. Family Rose here. Let's see if we can see if this is a 20th century piece. With that line down the middle, that extra foot, that probably is 20th century. And then this one's in some sort of riggery, going to be the same era. Hey, anything else that we can pick up here? This is a little dusty, but this looks like an old coal warmer. This is a neat Art Nouveau silver plate piece, but missing a lot of the silver plate. Mark of the manufacturer. Well, here's another catalog. Let's just briefly see who's in this catalog. Ah, these are chair makers in Italy. A lot of Berger style chairs. A lot of very fancy upholstered. Look at those padded headboards and footboards with the curves. Chamber decor of Venice. Jubil tone. My kindergarten teacher was 70 years old and going to retire the year I was in kindergarten. And she would bring one of these that I think she probably got when she was a little girl and play it for us every single day. It's an old auto harp, priced at 75. It's not a bad price for it, especially because it's got that pretty rose on it. But it's an instrument that not too many people play, so they don't go for a lot of money. Well, I bought a couple of interesting things. I bought the smaller of the two of these that they had. They thought that they were some sort of Catholic reliquary or something, but I do not believe so. So I'm headed to the next estate sale, but I spotted this thrift store. You can see Midtown Atlanta, the skyscrapers behind me. But this is the Cathedral of St. Philip Thrift House. And it's a really interesting old building. I wonder what it was originally. We're going to take a look inside. 
well, they said it was okay if I film, so I'm going to take some pictures for you. Here's some neat old silver plate sil souvenir spoons. One of those looks like the St. Louis World's Fair from 1904. Might need to take a look at that. Some little children's cups and the Murano pendant there in the Villa Fiore. The Sheridan Hotel in Dallas is that one. This is Benjamin Barton, circa 1877, it says. The little basket there. Neat carbon steel staghorn carving set there. That's something kind of nice with the little bow knots on the handles. Sterling bowl there, but it's been a little bit mushed. Well, that was a very short filming experience. I asked one person and they said I could film, and as soon as I started to, a very officious woman came out of the back and said that it was their policy not to allow pictures. And I explained why I was doing it, and she said, well, it doesn't matter because we don't allow it. And I said, that's fine. Uh, and after looking through the store, they have some nice things and they're all priced over retail price. So I would say I will not be coming back to the Cathedral of St. Philip Thrift House. And if you're a reseller, I wouldn't bother with it either. Well, before I get on the road to the next estate sale, please do like this video if you would. Hit thumbs up and leave a comment if you would like. And I'm always glad to talk to you folks in chat. You can join us for these live premieres for these videos every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern on this channel. And we also have memberships. You can click the join button if you see that below or look for the link in the description, as well as appraisals that we can help you with. Go to theantiquenomad.com and click the appraisal button for information about those. All right, so we've got time to squeeze in one more estate sale. Now, this seemed like it was more furniture and furnishings, but they had some mid-century that looked interesting, and it's right on the way in our direction, so we're going to go. Very pretty table and chair set. There's another caster set. Prussian, and then this basket here. Nippon cream and sugar. A little bit of Rosenthal. Now the cherub is really cute. Let's see what that is. It looks like it was a candlestick. There's just one, but that's a great price. Nice little wings. Twelve dollars and then three dollars off. I'll take that. And there's a smaller one here. Thank you. Also cute. And again, for the price, I think I'll take them both. This plate down here says it's old ivory, and I'd like to try to get it out if I can. I don't know how this opens without a key, though. It's one of these old china cabinets. Oh, there's the key. Great. Well, we'll just borrow it to use in the next place if it'll come out. There we go. Now, when I conduct estate sales, I usually hold on to the keys because I've had people actually try to take them before or buy them. And no, we need them for the furniture. Come on. There we go. Okay, so this says it's old ivory, and there are more than one pattern in old ivory. So let's see who did this. Oh, this is Syracuse old ivory. Okay, that's different than the European made old ivory I was thinking of. Okay, so Merso teardrop face, priced at 130 I wonder what kind of a discount they'll do on that, because that is a nice piece. It's very well controlled, and the amber is a little different. Often they're just clear. That gives a little better picture of the colors. That's why I like it. Well, they offered me that vase for 85 and because of what it is, I don't think that's a bad price. Old dome truck top trunk there. This is a pen rest. That's what they were made for originally. People use them for lots of things. And gosh, it's only nine dollars now. I think I'll probably get that. <laughs> this is depression glass. That's a cute piece. It's only four dollars today. That's cheap enough. 
Now, this is not so much a collector's estate. This is someone who had nice old things and decorated with them and used them. So it's not overwhelmed with a lot of merchandise. But there are things here to look at. Villery and Bach. Some of these Villery and Bach patterns still sell pretty well. They do the same thing we do with blanket pricing for basic stuff, which makes sense. Nice Hawaiian print there. Well, Palmettos, I guess that could be Florida or even here in Georgia. Let's see what this little ginger jar looks like on the bottom. If we can get a feel for the age. Okay, Japan with the paper label, that's going to be 1960s, 70s vintage. Old jug there. Down here is a nice piece. They've only got 75 on it, and now it's on sale. I am tempted by this because this looks like an old arts and crafts era painted piece. And I bet it's by Owens or Roseville or one of the Zanesville potteries. And that's a nice substantial size. I don't see any chips or cracks. It's hand painted under the glaze. I think there is potential for this piece because it's going to be some discount to that. And this should date to some point at the 1910 vintage. And I'll bet with a little bit of investigation I can find out who made this. One cute little old hull piece there. Hand painted tray with the pagodas from Japan in lacquerware. Oh, they went to the Columbia restaurant in Tampa. That's a wonderful Cuban restaurant that's in a beautiful building. It's been there since 1905. There were a lot of old Sleepy Eye pictures remade in the 1980s, but this one is original. You can tell partly by the crack allure. Unfortunately, it's got a hairline. And this one was Monmouth Pottery out of Illinois. They were asking 75, which is the con if the condition was better is not a bad price at all. This is rather a large house, but not a lot of stuff in it. So I think that this may have been a moving estate rather than a someone who's gone to their great reward estate. Just not a whole lot of stuff in this one. Hello again. Ooh, I gotta brush my hair. <laughs> well, let's see what's in the downstairs. This is quite a big house. Much larger than it looked like from the outside. Nice old frame there, Victorian, with the oak around the gilded center. The desk has a mid-century vibe, but I think that we sold all the desks during the shutdowns when people were working at home. They seem like they've gone quiet again. Only $6 on this washboard. I think I've got to get that. Wicker table with the bleached wicker from the late 80s, early 90s. And ooh, this is a completely empty closet. All right, well, it looks like maybe I've seen most of what there is down here, but I saw one more come this way sign. Some cute ornaments. The garage is practically empty. A few tools. I don't see anything really the vintage I look for in there. And then we'll go to the very back room and see if there's anything in here. And nope, this one's just uh... Oh, chalkboard though. That would be fun. It's a little large. But that looks like an old school chalkboard from maybe the 1930s or 40s. But I think that's it. But I did find a couple of things, so I'm glad I came to this one. So Sotheby's sold the house, and Sensing Transitions is the company holding the estate sale. And I have to say, they were very nice, and they were very willing to accommodate me. There were a few things I just couldn't quite pay the price on, and, you know, it's near the end of 25% off day, which means next is half off day. So I very quietly and subtly asked on one or two pieces if they could do a little better than the discount today, and they did and they are now in my car. I'm very happy about the things I bought here. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, 
Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!